This is Twit. The North Korean government denied hacking Sony Pictures over the weekend, but they called the devastating attack a righteous deed and suggested that its supporters and sympathizers might have actually done it. The government statement feigned ignorance about the entire situation, but they had previously threatened merciless countermeasures if the movie were to be released. Lily Hay Newman is a reporter for Slate and the lead blogger for Future Tense, and she joins us now. Hey, Lily, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? It's going great. Now, who done it, Lily? Are the North Koreans behind the hack? What's your best guess? Um, there's been a lot of speculation, and I think it's unknown at this point. Um, people think that it could be North Korea because, in a sense, that seems like something they might do, sort of on face value. Uh, they're a reclusive nation state. They are strange, unpredictable. Uh, but a lot of experts are saying that they don't think they're the ones behind the hack and that it doesn't fit with other hacks that have been attributed to North Korea. They had a pretty different style. So it seems like maybe it wasn't actually them this time. So we have the senior correspondent at IDG, Martin Williams, saying probably not. What, what are his reasons beyond, you know, this is kind of weird? Does he have anything more specific than that? Right. Um, a lot of uh, analysts looking at it have been saying it's not like North Korea to uh, identify themselves or take credit. And in fact, you know, like we were just saying, they are denying it, both uh, their representatives uh, overseas and in Pyongyang itself. And uh, so one of the issues is this uh, Guardians of the Peace uh, hashtag GOP that took credit for the hack. That's not typical. Uh, of North Korea and their types of maneuvers. The, whoever's behind it is also calling a lot of attention to it, and they're trying to wreak maximum havoc, but not necessarily do sort of intelligence gathering style hacking. It's more about just causing a lot of problems, and that also doesn't seem to be in the style of a nation state funded hack. Now, just to recap on the North Korea did it theory, uh, mm -hmm. The idea is that they had threatened retaliation for the release of a movie called The Interview starring James Franco and Seth Rogen. And from the trailers, it looks uh, kind of funny and pretty dumb. Uh, and that movie is to be released Christmas Day. Uh, and in retaliation for the hack, according to this theory, it's just a theory, uh, the, the hack took place. They stole everything from the company. They released five movies into the, uh, the, the torrent uh, sites. Uh, and they erased many of the computers and servers at Sony Pictures, forcing employees to use pen and paper for a few days. And the uh, sort of commissary there started taking cash only. They completely freaked out. It's probably the biggest corporate hack ever uh, of a company. And uh, so that's that theory. Now, there's another theory, uh, Lily, uh, that is that it was done by a disgruntled former employee. What do you make of the disgruntled former employee theory? Do you think that has any... Merit? Um, so I don't have any particular uh, sort of inside tract on that theory, uh, but that was uh, Tommy Stiansen uh, from a cyber firm called Norse, who was saying that he was going to go to Sony and the FBI with some evidence of that, that he and his group had done uh, a forensic uh, you know, investigation and felt that they had evidence that some of the IP address uh, addresses that the hack originated from uh, could match up potentially with this former employee in Japan. Um, and, you know, it's also possible, as North Korea itself said, that these are hackers acting on behalf of North Korea, or maybe it is somehow related. You know, there are a lot of theories right now, and Sony has been pretty careful not to say that they're ruling anything out. Um, also, just about the uh, movies that were taken during the hack and leaked, uh, one thing that people say m may be an indication that it wasn't North Korea is that they didn't, whoever hacked, uh, uh, perpetrated the hack didn't actually take the interview. They didn't leak that movie on torrents. So that seems like kind of a crucial oversight uh, if you're trying to protest a certain movie that you wouldn't even uh, steal that one. Well, it seems to me that they wouldn't want people to see it. So that, to me, that's evidence that it could have been them because, you know, they're trying to suppress 
uh, that movie. That's that's the whole goal of this whole thing. Now, uh, one final thing I, I wanted to ask you about. Now, of course, the, the attack is thought to have originated in China. The original uh, North Korea theory was that uh, North Korean uh, uh, sort of a, maybe a mercenary group of hackers or something was working on behalf of the North Koreans. Uh, the fact that it may not have been North Korea who did it and the fact that the hack may have originated in China, even if the North Koreans were behind it, doesn't diminish what North Korea is capable of. Can you talk just very briefly about the North Korean hacking operation, what its limitations and possibilities are? Sure. Um, this was something that I personally found very surprising because uh, I wouldn't think of North Korea as having incredible prowess in this area. But multiple accounts uh, that have been presented both to Congress and in security research uh, and there was a Reuters article, I think, on Friday that went up. All, all of them are saying that North Korea really does have uh, a lot of hacking capability. They employ uh, maybe almost 2,000 hackers, Reuters said, 1,800, in a special bureau called Bureau 121. And those hackers are really respected in North Korea and valued. So clearly the country is working on this as a form of... Uh, aggression internationally and has goals with their hacking campaigns. 